it's this amazing blossoming of a flower, the wicket changes, conditions, and then the actual chess game of cricket over a period of time, it just got me. I was, I was hooked really early. I began playing cricket probably at school, Matraville Primary, um, and there wasn't as many sports available in those days, so it was either cricket or swimming, or rugby league or soccer in the winter. So me and all my mates just sort of gravitated to cricket. And then one morning, I was 10 minutes from going down the beach, I was waxed up, my mother answered the phone. So she walked out the back and said, put your board away. Uh, Mr. Lyle Gardner from the Ramwick Cricket Club has asked you to play fourth grade at Snake Park today and I said, you'll play. I think my memory might be wrong, but I think I took four for 16 and that was the start. Found myself in the New South Wales squad for the start of the 80 81 season, which was, you know, this, this just, it happened really, really quickly. And then I was in that team and I got picked for the first game in Brisbane at the Gabba. And that side had Greg Chappell, Jeff Thompson, Alan Border, Martin Kent, Ray Phillips keeping. I mean, just star studded. I just couldn't believe I was there. Well, my first season was 80-81, and a, a few guys from Randwick, Gary Bensley, uh, Eric Higgins, Malcolm Brown, I was playing first grade with, had all been over to England to play club cricket. Played club cricket over there, you're just playing on the weekend. So I signed up for this club, Fleetwood. The Australian team's touring. It's the Ashes series. It bo ends up being Botham's Ashes. But at the fifth test at Manchester, it's still in the balance. It's 2-1 their way with two tests to go. Now the phone call comes out. And this bloke goes, it's the manager of the Australia. It's the manager of the Australian cricket team, Mr. Whitney. This bloke goes, you're being picked for the test starting tomorrow. They said, grab your gear, go up into the room. We'll have a press conference in about an hour at six o'clock tonight, release the news to the world. <laughs> really? Uh, there's your room key. So I go up and I put the key in the door and there's gear everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh, I wonder who they're rooming with. And in the corner, there was this beautifully crafted leather port. And on top, embossed in gold, <laughs> was DK Lilly. <laughs> no, and he walked in about 10 minutes later, and I remember standing at attention <laughs> like that. I didn't know what to do. I've got to say, he was just fantastic. He like just lifted the old rooster wing and I kept saying, but this is only going to be my seventh first class game tomorrow, mate. We're there for you, mate. All you got to do is remember what you got on your chest and just give 100%, mate. If you bowl good, bad or indifferent, just give everything you got. That's all we're asking. That's all I needed to hear. Just got the ball and you just want to get that first one out. So I ran in, got the first one and Chris Tavares sort of bunted it to square leg and we had a fielder there. The clouds were lower than this ceiling of this stand and they were dark and I'm shining the ball and Kim's come up and going yeah I got the first one out mate good on you shining the ball and I felt this spot of rain on me forehead and by the time I got back to me Mark it's raining so I bowled one delivery off the field and it, it that over would have taken an hour and five minutes for me debut over it's got to be the longest debut over in test cricket history and then second or third over I bowled, Gower had another flash and he got caught in the gully by Graham Yellow and I've got one for eight off three. And you're thinking, at such a young age, how easy is this? <laughs> you find out real quick, it ain't that easy. I got back to Australia and my life had changed. You know, I'd had a lot of press about it and you go from being this bloke who's, you know, playing a few games for the Blues and that to, mate, you're in the test side. But it took a long time to claw my way back in. Got back in for a test match in 87, which became more famous for blocking Richard Hadley, who is Sir Richard Hadley out now. Drama. And then we got to that last over. You know, batting wasn't my great strength. The question mark I asked myself immediately was, how the did I get down the striker's end and Billy's at the non-striker's end sitting on his bat who could actually bat a bit. That's closer. 
bounce. I was really surprised that he didn't bowl me a bouncer to like try and force me back. He had a great bumper. Played and missed one or two. Let a couple go and blocked the last two out. Good luck, Witt. That was a significant moment for Australian cricket. Allen had won his first series as a captain. We battled really hard. To Richard's credit, if you watch that footage, he immediately puts his hand around. He taps me on the head and he says, you did a great thing for Australian cricket today, Widow. Not like abuse, you got lucky or unbelievable. How do you feel when a nasty ball sees a ninth wicket fall and there's a groan from the hill? The two he's had. Well, I got back from England on 1981. So Steve Rickson from the last ad, Mike Whitney. Yep, you're going to hit three runs off Joel Garner. Off Joel Garner. Like Alan Border and the best players in the world were struggling against Joel Garner. How do you feel when you face big Joel for the final ball? Two hours go by and we haven't got the shot yet. And Joel comes up and he says, I can't bowl anymore. My arm's eight foot long. I bowl a two hour spell. And he, he's trying to shot him up there. So I can get, he said, stop, I've got another idea. You just film me bowling and film Widow playing the cover drive and I'm gonna throw it from behind him and time it perfectly. So, because they can't bowl no more. And that's what happened. They reset the thing, Joel shot this one and I timed it perfectly. So after all these years, there's the admission that I never hit the ball. <laughs> I've lived on that TV. So yeah, after I finished, uh, I retired in February 1994. And within six months of starting at Channel 7, I had Sydney Weekender, state-based, Who Dares Wins, whew, how weird's this show, and Gladiators, whew, how weird's this show. Hi, I'm Mike Whitney, and welcome to Who Dares Wins, the show where we could walk up to you anywhere, anytime, and dare you to do something you never thought you could, should, or would do. Those what two shows, Who Dares and, and Glads, massive, man. But well, what we're gonna do is dare someone to eat three and whistle us a tune all within a minute, and if they can Still at that. Sydney Weekender, in my 25th year, as I said, the show's been going 26 years, but I've pretty much been the, the one host, and, and I, I want to do another year at least. Uh, president of, of the Randwick Perdisham Career Club in my 19th year as president. Trying not to do as much overall. I mean, I'm 60 now, it's been a... I keep saying this to people. The Mike Whitney radio station has been on loud for 40 years, really since 1980 when I was pulled out of I just want to back it off a few notches and smell the roses a little bit more.